Hello all, welcome back to another video. Uh, thank you very much for clicking on the video. I'm out today in a local woodland uh, close to my house and I'm just going to um, be chilling out really. So I've just walked through, seen all the, um, the bluebells are starting to die off a little bit now. They've um, come out for spring and we're just going into summer months. So I've found myself a nice little spot behind a holly bush that I'm going to try out a quite rare bivy bag and um, I'm going to get my thoughts on it, let you see what you think of it and um, yeah just just chill out so it's not like it's not going to be anything like the kayak trip I've just done but you know it's a simple one I can go home in the morning um, I am quite close to a main road I've walked in as far as I can but you can sort of hear it in the background but in some instances that works in your favour because no one knows you're here they can't hear you most of the canopies lush green so when it's like that no one seems to smoke so I can just have a fire. So I want to go get set up and uh, take you round the um, take you round the bivy, see what you think. Alright, so this is it all set up. This is known as the double hooped British Army SAS survival bivy bag and they are very rare apparently. Um, I managed to pick this up for 50 quid, so I'm quite lucky. I don't think the guy realised how much they're actually worth. And uh, they are, to be honest, very, very low profile. And they do sort of feel like you're in a bit of a coffin. But I want to give it the benefit of the doubt before I decide I don't want it. Uh, it's about 2.8 metres long. So your body fits more or less in the foot box and up to the second hoop. And then you have this really, really big space up the front here. Um, you can put your bag and your boots and all that sort of stuff in there. But yeah, like I say, it's very, very low profile. And I've just pegged it down with some uh, little shoots of hazel. So they do nicely. The poles that come with it, I don't know if they are the originals, are these three little poles. I think if they had... Um, oh, I don't know if they had a little bit more length in them or it was a single one with a shot cord it'd be better but the guy who owned this before he had someone tailor in some little velcro no not velcro sorry um, denim patches there because apparently it's quite common for these to um, to tear and I've just stuck some pegs in there to give it a bit more lift up the top so that would be interesting <laughs> I might just climb in it so you can see what it's like. So, zip's a bit funky. Get that one done. Get that one done. Hey, this one seems to be brand new, to be honest. I can't do this one with one hand. But, um, yeah, you can't really see in there too much, but look, look how shallow that is. So I'm get my air mat in there and it's going to be a bit of a squeeze. But like I say, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to try it out. And if I don't like it, it's off. <laughs> but yeah, good bivy for stealth, I suppose.
Right. Well, we're all set up now. Um, Bibby's set up there. I've tied these off just to make it a bit better up here. A couple of little, um, oh, can not see there? A couple of little friction hitches uh, with quick release. They just slide up and down like uh, guy lines. And then another one at the back. So, as you can see in there, that is pretty snug. So, we'll see how that goes tonight. Right, well I'm glad I bought the, uh, the lighter sleeping bag for this one because I was going to bring my army sleeping bag. The weather's sort of all over the place at the moment as most people know. And um, so I bought the, the OEX one for my last trip. Thinking that because that bivy bag's so small and enclosed, I think it's going to be really toasty and warm. So I don't think I'm going to have a problem with um, with the cold tonight. Should be fine. I'm on the climax static V mat again. Oh, what was that? Ooh, hoo, hoo. Got some pheasants in here. But um, yeah, so I need to collect some firewood now. Get ready for the night. Um, I need to make a tripod because I'm going to try out a grill that I've used before but I've had these little um, metal sort of clips that clip to it so you can dangle the grill from the tripod and what else do I need I've got my old leather chair just like a tripod chair so I need to make some legs for that so lots of making so I'm gonna head off get some wood prepare some stuff and then uh, yeah start chilling out for the evening because we're in the summer months now and it don't start getting dark till late, so I'm not rushing too much. <laughs> so if you're joining, if you're on the video so far, thank you very much, and um, come and chill with me now. Yeah. So I found three bits of uh, dead hazel, semi-dead, laying on the floor. Um, this place is full of it, so I'm going to use these and lash them together, and that's going to be my cooking tripod. So that's one tripod, I can make that out of dead stuff because it doesn't really matter. And then, as you can see, there's plenty of, um, plenty of, uh, yeah, hazel around. Another bits and bobs. It does blend in pretty well, that. You can see my bottle in the background. But yeah, I'll get them, lash them together, and then we'll make my chair. And collect some wood, so <laughs> it's never ending. Right. So the way I've always sort of lashed wood together is to get a free like that tie a little loop in one end there you go, just pull it through like that just an overhand loop and then I'll get it get the end and I'll just put I've got quite a lot of this so I'm going to have to pull it through so I'll just cinch it on the first one uh, there's probably many ways of doing this, but this is the way I've always done it. Pull all that through. I've got, like I say, I've got quite a lot. Probably going to cut a bit off. And then cinch that around the first one. So sort of go around and under that one. Do that a few times. Just do it loosely. Like that. Come back around. You don't want it too tight because you're just going to make it difficult for yourself. So. Just sort of lash it round again, lash it round there, do a couple of, you know, a few times, sort of like that, like that, get on there, and then once I get to this stage of lashing it round these ends, I'll just sort of go around this bit just to, just to tie it off in there. Too much cord. It's <laughs> way too much cord. Just yeah, through there, and then do the same on the other other side. Come back through here, <coughs> tie that off again, and it just stops them. So it stops them splaying, then, doesn't it? So when you um, when you splay the legs, woohoo! Um, <laughs> It tightens these up. You sort of tighten up. They tighten up around it. Come on, camera. Can you please focus?
yeah so it, it tightens up around them and then there's that little loop I was telling you about it hangs nice and tight you can just hang what you want off of that then under your fire happy days this is my little leather bushcraft chair that um, a good friend called Nick made for me and he done a blooming good job of it I'll tell you he does doesn't do it as a live for a living he does it as more of a hobby but the stitching on that is um if you can see it it's very very tough kevlar stuff um you say it's never that's probably never going to break and he very kindly made it for me so i'm gonna get these i've had to get some um some live hazel purely because dead stuff if you're sitting on it it's just going to snap and the difference with these is you have to this camera doesn't want to focus on anything other than my face right so this one you have to kind of round the edges off because if you don't you've got uh, the likelihood of it tearing through the fabric so it's just a case of getting your knife just sort of placing it on the edge and just 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 working round just take that sharp edge off and then same principle as the tripod I'm going to lash it together and then insert it in the slots oi oi coming out with all the puns today <laughs> and then yeah so yeah don't, only need little fun movements like that don't need a lot and then end up with a little edge just to stop it tearing through and that's it so as I, I've gone back to making a lot of stuff on this camp I think I use, I've been a bit lazy recently not doing anything so I just bring a chair bring this bring that so I'm looking forward to using the grill um, never used the grill this way before so it'd be different um, I was gonna have a fire pit a bush box under that and I thought you know what sod it I'm just gonna have a ground fire it's it's very wet here anyway and um, quite swampy and I can clear the ground up quite easily in, in the morning just douse it as a sort of like a swamp in that direction over there so I can get water cool it down so nearly time to chill out <laughs> there we have it one bivy set up one tripod for cooking and one very bushcrafty leather chair all lashed up same principle only difference is you need to put the lash in a lot further down or kind of around the middle because otherwise you've got no length at the top but yeah that is me I am just gonna chill get the fire going and chill Process what I thought is enough wood for now. Let's get the fire going, and I've got some more over there. Um, there's no birch over this side of the woodland, so I don't want to go to the other side. So I've just got some fat wood from home that I've collected on previous trips. And I'm just going to batten that down into smaller strips that are more manageable. Get the fire going. Well, I've got a few fatwood shavings uh, here. It's on the wet ground, not usually how I'd do it. But these mozzies are really starting to pee me off, so I just want to get it going. A um, couple of fatwood feather sticks, a couple of batten down bits, so hopefully that should be enough. Come okay, on. That would have thought you were good. Oh, this stuff's not lighting at all, is it? Ah, oh, there we go.
Right. Well, it's going now. Chucked a few biggies. Well, bigger ones on there. You can see all the twigs inside going. So that should take. I'm happy that's going to go. Don't have to keep feeding it for now. Put a lot of twigs on the, the base of that. That fat wood should see it through. So, right. Oh, just go and have a drink. Fire's well and truly on now, as you can see it's burning in the background. Um, this is what I wanted to show you guys. Um, don't think it's going to focus on it, but um, I've had this grill for ages, absolutely ages, and I've used it on its own most of the time, but when my wife got it for me, she got me these metal bits that go on it that hang it over like that, so I've always wanted to try it on a tripod. So tonight, I'm going to cook my steak on there so that should be fun just chilling over here and the baby's still holding that well i'm hoping the fire gets rid of these bloody mozzies because they, they seem to love me at the moment well the fire's burning down lovely now um i'm just waiting for some coals and then got some of the food ready just cut the uh, ciabatta ciabatta however you pronounce it <laughs> i never really know um i've got the tripod and everything ready i'm going to season i've got a steak that i'm going to um put some oil on season with some steak seasoning uh, i've got some cheese some lettuce and some caramelized onion chutney so we're going to make a bit of a ciabatta sub type thing with a, a steak so i've never done it before thought why not seemed quite simple but what i wanted to move on to is i wanted to give a bit of a shout out to a subscriber um who's been quite kind to me uh so i want to get the lovely hairdo out oh look at that so i went all um matrix style and let the kids shave my head <laughs> so but um, I do, as you all know, I do a bit of shooting on the farm and that if you watch my channel and I've had some problems with being stealthy really around some of the rabbits and things like that. So, Mr. Andy Stealth Steve, I believe his name is, um, I'll link him somewhere in the description or whatever like that, kindly sent me this. <laughs> so now, your bloody rabbits better watch out. <laughs> So, look at that, how cool is that? So, they can't see me white, well, they can see this bit now. Might have to go full camo and get the paints on there or whatever like that, but, yeah. Cheers, Andy. Thanks for that, mate. Um, yeah, tell me if you can see me. <laughs> Generous amount of seasoning. I've already put the oil on there, so no need to do that. And then we'll get the grill on the tripod over the fire, let that warm up for a bit, and uh, the abba dabba do. Mm. Oh, bollocks. 
Oh, that's shit, isn't it? Ah. It's grilled crap. <laughs> Might as well have had a cowboy steak. About to toast in steaks down there, sliced up. It's not an Instagram steak, but it's a good steak. And yes, before anyone says, I did sanitize the back of that packet before I used it as a chopping board. So this should be nice. Yeah, drop the uh, steak in the fire, but oh well. It's not going to deter me. But um, yeah, that grill when it's hanging like that, it's um, it's a bit difficult. But hey-ho, it's another, another way, isn't it? I don't think I'd ever want to do sausages on it. You want the lettuce on here? Use all that lettuce up. We've got quite a bit. We want the steak. Like that. And some diced. Cheese on top of that. Got mature cheddar cheese. Oh. Lovely jubbly. And then finish it off. Some Branston's caramelised onion chutney. Get some of this on there. Healthy dollar for that. It's nice uh, smell it. Uh, we're losing the light a little bit now and um, food's done. This is, oh come on camera, focus on it. No, doesn't want to focus on that. We have the ciabatta, steak, cheese, lettuce and caramelised onion chutney sauce so I've never had one of these let's give it a go oh that's good that is good mm. no packet food this time <laughs> and it's nice with the tobacco being toasted I don't think it matters how I drop the steak in the fire oh, I can't can't taste any ash <laughs> so yeah, we're losing the light now, so I'm going to eat this and then I uh, might chill for the rest of the night by the fire and head off to bed. So, cheers for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed um, this little bit of uh, bushcrafty stuff that I've done for you. Um, haven't done any for a while, so it's been nice to come out and do it again. It's tiring, it's a lot of work, I'm not going to lie. So, I'm going to eat this and then um, I might see you in a bit. So dinner's been had, we uh, restocked the fire, done a bit of a log cabin, that's the way, um, chair over there, and I've been, I sort of packed the tripod away, and like I said earlier, I want to see what this is like, because apparently you can fit, let's see whether I can fit this in here or not, should be able to put this in, this part of the bivy, there we go. So that fits nicely in the bivy at the front. There we go. And then I could probably get my boots, so bags in there, get my boots down the side and actually 
they've made it you can see where it's lifted up there it's been made to stick stuff in um, oh, let's have a look inside now I've got the light is there all sorts of bugs in there is there that is what you're working with <laughs> that's tiny isn't it the, I suppose it's for the SAS so they kind of wanted it to be um, you know stealthy as possible so when I go to bed I put my boots in there crawl in and hope for the best but yeah that's what we got for the rest of the night I've really enjoyed it so far got the blinding light out again Ooh. <laughs> but yeah no it's been um it's been a tiring night I'm not gonna lie um, but I've thoroughly enjoyed it so I'm gonna see see what this bivvy's like give it a go um, it's funny. I don't really want to sell it um, when I haven't even tried it so I need to try it if I hate it after this night then yeah okay it's gone I've got plenty of other setups that I thoroughly enjoy um, got the OEX bivvy which I do like I just wish it was a different colour <laughs> it just comes in that blue but I suppose they're sort of mountaineering type colours aren't they so but yeah for what I do if they had something in that style that size shape and everything like that in a different colour it'd be ideal but hey ho I don't really want to go down the Dutch army route because I don't think it's too much better than this really so if anything most people say this is better right let's go and uh, chillax Morning and all. Um, just uh, just woke up now. It's about half five, I think. Um, yeah, I've had a pretty uh, pretty comfy night in the bag. It's um, taking a bit of getting used to. It's a bit bit of condensation on the side where the direction of my breath, but you tend to get out with most bivy bags, to be fair. Um, but it's a lot smaller the amount of condensation than I would usually get. I think the lens. Look. Yeah, it's um a lot smaller. I've had a little breathy hole open all night just to let a bit of air in here and there. But yeah, there's loads of room to shuffle around. The only thing there isn't is headroom, but tons of room at the front for all my gear. And um yeah, I've slept quite well really. I could even side sleep in it, so that's that's interesting. The only one thing I found um, that I can't use in it is my inflatable pillow on top of the mat because that takes my head to the point where I can't move so I ended up using my hoodie hoodie instead um, just made that into a bit of a bit of padding it worked all right so I'm not sure now whether to um, whether to have a lion or get up because we are due a fair bit of rain so so they say might check the weather again but um, yeah I don't really want to if I can help it, I'd rather go home dry. Don't really want to pack up all this in the wet. <laughs> the only downside with bivvies you can't you can't really pack up inside this. You know, um, but if I have to, I have to then. Uh, but it's been good. It's been enjoyable. <laughs> I'm just here at the moment listening to bird song. It's quite nice. It's early in the morning, so there's not many cars about, which is lovely. So I'm gonna go um sort myself out I think. Oh.
Well, morning all. Um, everything's packed away. Got here just, well, sort everything out just before it starts spitting. Um, I can feel it now coming down. So I'm kind of in, got the, um, got the fire cleared away. Just need to dig the ground up, sort that out a little bit. Um, and then uh, Bivy and everything's packed away. So I'm in two minds whether now it's spitting, whether to have a little fire, um, cook my mats and sausage that I bought. It's only, you know, you can eat that out the bag, it doesn't really matter. Um, and I don't live too far, so it's not like it's a massive issue. Uh, but I would like a hot drink, to be fair. Um, but so, I'm, yeah, I'm in two minds whether to just call it a day and leave or um, try and have a little fire. But it sounds like it might start coming down. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> Right, so this um, this spitting is gradually getting worse. So I've I've made a call. I'm gonna I'm gonna have this. If you've never seen it. It's a, just a sausage in a packet. Um, I was gonna warm it up. I think this one's a garlic one. It's only a small one, so just enough just to tie me over. Um, I'm just gonna eat that as it is. Um, have some water and get out of here. So um, yeah, if you got this far, thank you very much for watching, everyone. And um, for all you timestamp people out there, um, if you wanna. Put it in the comments i don't know what it's all about you just sort of put dates specific dates of things um today is uh, king charles's coronation in uh, the uk so if you want to timestamp that you know when this uh, when this morning was so so thank you very much for watching everyone and i'll see you all again in another video tally who